Are we moving from a cloud model to a ubiquitous computing model? I think the signs are there. Let's discuss it. Welcome to the Cloud Insider, where you hear about the reality of cloud computing and the expanding use of generative AI. I'm your host, Dave Linthicum, author, speaker, cloud computing thought leader, tech exec, B-list geek. Let's start the discussion. So this comes by uh, some things I wrote about in the book and some predictions I made uh, that are covered by the press. And I, I think there's some confusion around this. And I thought I'd uh, spend uh, this video cast kind of uh, uh, explaining uh, what I think is going on and what seems to be an emerging pattern out there in the world of technology. So ubiquitous computing means that we're able to run applications and store data anywhere. It could be on this microphone, it could be on my phone, it could be on uh, this uh, this uh, Apple Watch, if I had one on. And really, the reality is that we're looking for the most optimized targeted platforms to run our workloads and to store our data. So the idea being that it's not always going to be cloud that's going to be the target platform for our applications and our data sets, but it's going to be any number of systems and really kind of open your mind to the world of computing. So in other words, we're dealing with old legacy systems, old cores that are running or, or new cores that are running within the data center. And we're dealing with uh, the major cloud providers or hyperscalers and also the rise of the micro clouds, the ability to provide some sort of a niche service, such as all the .ai companies that are out there today that provide GPUs and TPU access and do so on demand. And so we're moving from really the notion that we're going to centralize our compute, computing needs and storage needs and typically going to do that on cloud. That's been kind of the common understanding, I think, for the last 10 years into something that's a bit more open-minded where we're going to leverage whatever computing platforms that we should be leveraging to support the requirements of that particular workload. Sometimes it's going to be cloud. Sometimes it's going to be an on-premise system. Sometimes it's going to be an old on-premise system. Sometimes a new on-premise system. Also, edge computing and uh, and servers that exist on various systems. And so, people are rethinking the fact that everything should be migrated to a public cloud provider. And and uh, certainly, with the costs that people are seeing in terms of that are associated with leveraging a cloud provider, that, that seems to be. Uh, something that keeps coming up. And so if you look at the repatriation movement that occurred in 2023, that's a reaction to the fact that they had huge cloud bills in 2022. And normally, as I mentioned on the show before, those are self-inflicted wounds. In other words, they're not doing something in an optimized way. They're not uh, refactoring their existing applications. They're not leveraging some of the cloud native features on those particular providers. They're just picking up the applications and the data sets that exist on premise. They're finding an analog of a platform that exists in a public cloud provider, and they're relocating there and they're running there. And uh, suddenly they're receiving larger bills. And the, anal the analogy that I always use, it's you're you know taking a 1950s refrigerator uh, plugging it into the wall and uh, wondering why we get a big electric bill at the end of the month. It's not designed with the same degree of efficiency to leverage some of the cloud native capabilities and therefore it's going to be more expensive. So um, the reaction to that is either you're going to modernize the applications in place, in other words, you're going to refactor them on the cloud, which is a good idea, or in many instances, we're going to move them to another platform, which we think is going to be uh, less expensive. We're, we're proven to be less expensive. And so that's why you're seeing some very visible um, cloud exits out there that people are publishing things about where they're realizing they're spending $3 million in a month on cloud infrastructure, and then they're buying $600,000 of the hardware. And by the way, the servers and the hardware and the compute platforms are getting rather cheap. And then they're moving the workloads and the storage to that platform and therefore able to save a lot of money. Now, that that's not always going to work for you. You got to remember that we're there's a reason to leverage cloud and a reason not to leverage cloud. If you're doing very simplified systems where you're doing the same things repeated over and over again and storing the same kind of data, and it's not using a lot of features and functions of the platform, it's perfectly sensible to leverage an on-premise system uh, for the cost advantages. And we move to the cloud typically because it's going to be more convenient. We can go ahead and allocate the resources that we need and the stories that we need and the compute we need and get our applications on the platform, but also there's an ecosystem there. In other words, they have databases, they have AI systems, they have application development engines, they have a marketplace of partners with lots of different technologies that we can bring to bear. However, if we're not leveraging those technologies and therefore not getting the value out of that, in many instances, it's going to make sense uh, to move it to another platform. So that means we're considering everything and anything 
that's going to be a potential compute platform. So now we have edge computing. Now we have the ability to kind of run things within a data center or even run things on a device. We have mobile computing platforms. And we have lots of decoupled uh, hardware that's out there that's being underutilized right now. And so what ubiquitous computing is, is that, is that those are going to be candidates to run the applications in a store of data. And so that comes down to the fact that, uh, you know, this is typically going to be a cost saving measure. It's an efficiency measure. And also, really, it provides you with flexibility of the architecture to run the workloads and store the data on anything that makes sense, it's going to be much more cost effective and kind of opening our minds to the fact that everything doesn't need to be lifted and shifted uh, into the cloud. Now that we have high speed networking, we have connectivity issues, we kind of solve that problem. A lot of this stuff is possible. So we as a business can exist with having, you know, thousands of applications that are running on a thousand different platforms. And we're able to manage these complex kind of distributed systems through common control planes, common application development mechanisms. And so we're moving to this world where heterogeneity and, uh, uh, and ubiquitous nature of how the computing platforms are going to be reality. So enterprises are seeing this as well. So they're investing in things that are normally non-cloud. They're putting things on premise, edge computing. All these things are really kind of back on the table. And that's probably going to be a good thing. If you think about it, if we're only focusing on moving to a particular platform, we're going to under-optimize lots of these systems because that platform is not always going to be the right platform for the particular application workloads and data. And so in doing that, we're kind of building inefficiency into the model because some of them are going to be perfectly fine for running on cloud. Some of them are not going to be good potential candidates of cl on cloud. And those are the ones that are typically being moved back on premise today. So we're thinking a little bit more logical in making sure that we're going to localize the applications and localize the data on the platform, no matter what it is. We owned hardware, software, cloud computing, uh, micro clouds, um, managed service providers, colo providers, anybody out there and anything that is able to provide a compute service. And we're doing so by making a business case and a technical case that that platform is going to be the best place for those things to reside. That's kind of all it is. So um, raising some eyebrows, I did an uh, interview with some reporters this week about ubiquitous computing and what it means and, and really having people try to understand it. I wrote about it in the book when looking at predicting the future as to where we're looking to go. So heterogeneity, complexity, ubiquitous nature of the compute platforms is going to be reality moving forward. Uh, and that's not me saying that. Those are patterns that I'm seeing emerge out in the space. So anyway, let me know what you think down below in the comments as to whether you agree or disagree. And if you disagree, it's perfectly fine. Tell me why you disagree and make your own case. It'd be interesting to see lots of opinions on this. And obviously, predicting the future is not an exact science, uh, but I think it's pretty clear that we're moving in that direction. So anyway, like and subscribe. Uh, make sure to check out my blog on InfoWorld. Make sure to check out my book. Uh, lots of courses out on LinkedIn Learning. Please check those out as well. And I'm looking forward to talking to you next time. Thank you very much.